Hello there, it's Gina Gardner here and welcome to this episode of Gina Gardner and Friends. I am thrilled to be able to introduce to you Dr. Marnie Foderero. She is an award-winning author and she writes spiritual fiction. She has a number of books, but today we're going to be talking about living authentically. Now, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and, and a little bit about your books before we get going. Yeah, sure, Gina. Thank you so much for having me on your radio show. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, well, you know, I spent a lifetime in the Chicago suburbs, USA, Midwest, and I was a high school special education teacher for 35 years. 12 of those years, I was a university graduate school adjunct professor, and I was raising my two children and kind of like you know, living the American dream. You know, I thought that I was living authentically and I was, you know, confident and I was, you know, successful. Um, but at some point I had to make the big decision to really take a look at my life and, you know, in midlife. And I chose to leave my 27 year marriage uh, because my values of honesty, love, and goodness, and family, you know, it just didn't align with who I was with. And so that was a very, very tough decision to make, but it was almost one I felt that in order to be true to my values and my character, I didn't have a choice. And that really prompted some significant trauma, actually. Sure. Uh, you know, I lost everything that provided safety and security to me, including my home, um, my assets, my money, even my support system of friends and family and neighbors, you know, that you think would be there, but really kind of, you know, uh, were not there for mm -hmm. me. I actually even lost my two adult children to what's called parental alienation. Um, and so that's been an enormous trauma, not having them in my life. So really, I had to do a deep dive in, to try to understand what is going on here. How did all of this happen to me? And what was my role in it? You know, what was my foundational, you know, upbringing or beliefs that allowed me to, you know, stay in something that was very unhealthy for so very long? And you know, some miracles presented to me at my garage sale. And I was filled with love and gratitude, you know, no negative feelings, even though they would have been extremely justified. Uh, but I had so many neat experiences that kind of was like a spiritual awakening. Um, and I ended up finding my author's voice. And I wrote my first book, The Spiritual Fiction, God Came to My Garage Sale. <laughs> and even though it's a fiction, and it's endorsed by James Redfield, who wrote The Celestine Prophecy. It's won a lot of awards. It is all really based on true experiences. So that led me on my writing journey. And after retiring from my wonderful career in education, I up and moved from Chicago to the Caribbean, where I have since gone on to write a number of other books while I heal and while I live authentically. You know, I have a lot of guests on my show who have um, almost a road to Damascus um, experience where they recognize that the life that they are living is not serving them. I mean, sometimes that that experience, that shift takes years. Sometimes it's a moment. It's often created through a, a, a relationship breakdown or a trauma of some sort. But the the thing that they have in common is that it brings them to a place where they are truly authentic about who they are and what they want in life and why that's important to them. And I'm interested to explore, you've used the medium of writing novels. Was that because it was, it was um, the creative, just, the, it was a creative exercise? Was it for you cathartic? Was it a way of helping you heal or was it a mixture of those or something completely different? You know, I would say all of the above. 
you know, with my first book, God came to my garage sale, I was compelled to share my experiences. After I did some research, you know, over a couple of years to really figure out, did I, you know, was I touched by divine? Did God really come to my garage sale? You know, why was I shown some things that I thought were coincidences, but really were synchronicities? So with that particular book, you know, I just was compelled like anyone who has had kind of a spiritual awakening. They would like to, they're just compelled to talk about it. But after I moved to the Caribbean, I did a little bit more of a deep dive into, you know, what did I really experience? And I was trying to understand, I didn't really know what narcissism was or domestic violence even though I was in the throes of domestic violence for years, I didn't recognize it as that. You know, I just kept on making excuses or, you know, looking the other way or or just thinking, okay, things will get better. Or, you know, I'm I was actually gaslit, it turned out, to to believe that I wasn't really capable or able, um, that that I was. I ended up questioning what I saw and what I heard. And even though I know what I saw and I know what I heard. And so the gaslighting just kind of slowly diminishes your self-worth. And so even very accomplished, successful people that seem to have it all together really can be made to question their, their abilities. And so when I got to the Caribbean, I just really researched a lot of that. And I had a lot of terms I was looking up and trying to connect the dots to my own experience. And, and um, I ended up, you know, having hundreds and then thousands of terms to, to look up. And I thought, wow, if this is really helpful for me, it probably could be helpful to someone else who is going through a similar situation. Um, and so I wrote my first book in the five book series, True Deceit, False Love, because what I was dealing with was really false love. I wanted true love, but that's not what I was dealing with. The love was false and the deceit was the truth. And so that got me really on my writing journey to heal. Marnie was talking about her personal experience of dealing with domestic abuse and what was true love and what was false love. And I've worked with many clients who are wrestling with that question, who have come out of, of very toxic relationships. And it strikes me that, that many people um, mistake love for bartering. I will give you the attention or what passes for love if you will do what I want or if you will indulge me in this, that or the other. And I see unconditional love is not something that's pink and fluffy. If you love someone unconditionally, you ex want the best for them and you expect the best from them. Whereas love that is conditional is I think just an illusion um, and it's serving one not both parties and that true love has to serve both parties being with that person makes you even feel that you can be even more than than you are and they want the best for you they're your champion um, and they treat you well but I think it has to start with the relationship you have with you because that's reflected in the relationships that you have with everybody else. Most definitely. So a big part of the healing journey and what I, what has really worked for me is to do, you know, a, a self-reflection, look into my own intergenerational family trauma, look into my core wounds or what, what made me a target for an abuser? What made me an overgiver or a people pleaser? You know, just going along, ignoring, glaring red flags for years and years and years. So I had to do that look to really get to my authentic self, to realize I needed to make some changes. I needed to put up some healthier boundaries with people and be more discerning 
about who I let in my life or who I even keep in my life. And, and that was a big turning point. But yes, I found writing to be very, very therapeutic in my journey. And, and the writing of my five book series, True Deceit, False Love, is not any kind of autobiographical kind of account or anything like that. It's basically a resource manual and tools and creative approaches to deal with this type of family trauma. So there's poetry, there's word search, you know, there's a survivor's workbook of people find that writing is healing for them. But, you know, I've really come to believe that when you turn the corner and you become more authentic and, and you're, you get out of that false reality you were living in, that, you know, really, they, you usually find a creative approach somehow to deal with um, what you've been through and you rediscover some passions that you might have, you know, tucked away years ago, or you explore new adventures um, just to fill your soul and your heart with, you know, just adventure and happiness and just getting more in touch with who you are. It's so important, isn't it, to actually recognize that the relationship that you have with you, how you take responsibility for you, makes the difference. Because had you had the uh, res inner resources and the inner consciousness, that when those first red flags started to show, that you'd said, no, no, that's not for me, and walked away at that point, um, then life would have been very different. Having said that, I do think there, there is something around, you talked about generational healing. And I do think there is something around as you heal yourself, so you have the capacity to break the cycle um, and help um, that abuse uh, be finish. Because one of the things that's very evident is that abuse within families seems to um, repeat itself over time. Definitely. And you know, the abusers that come into our life are also products of abuse themselves. Yeah, awesome. yeah. So, so, you know, you're dealing with it on many different levels. Um, but it, it's a very good thing to be able to come to the awareness of what you have gone through and, and, make some decisions that are in your best interest, yeah. you know, like putting the oxygen mask on yourself first before helping others. And, you know, with, with, you know, the hierarchy of, you know, the self-actualization being the top, really, I believe the next step is, is inspiring others and giving service to others, like sharing what, you have experienced and what has worked for you because, you know, it might help someone. I think our voices matter. And, you know, whether it's in written word, whether it's on a podcast or a radio show, um, I just think that others need to know they're not alone out there. And, you know, maybe something that we use to help us get through could be just the perfect tool for them to, to, turn the corner on their own life. I think that's really important. And one of the things that I'd like to say, you're listening to this and you are um, you are unhappy in the relationship that you have. If, for example, you, know, you feel that you're being um, treated badly, whether that's physically or emotionally or sexually, you know, it's time to get some help. You, know, you don't have to go through this entirely alone. There are... Uh, organizations and people out there who can help you but I also like to give a message to someone if you're not too proud of the behavior that you're demonstrating either because you drink too much or that you've got a bad temper or whatever I'd also say to you for both parties start to take responsibility for being authentically who you are and if that's not how you want to be, then you have a choice. You can continue doing what you're doing and then you'll just get the same result or you can choose to do different things differently. Yes, what, very much. What was the thing for you that, what was the final straw? What was the thing that actually you said enough? 
not going to allow this to happen anymore. Yes. And, and, you know, Gina, it happened after, you know, 27 years yeah. of ignoring red flags. So you could go on and on for a long time without having that final straw. I would say my light bulb moment happened, you know, over a pizza dinner at the local pub. And I was with my now ex-husband and one of our adult children. And it was like, he made some unintentional confessions and, you know, it did involve money manipulation. And what really was the final straw is it wasn't just the abuse. And to me, it also involved our children. And that was like, oh my gosh, this is wrong on so many levels. And, you know, even the adult child was extremely shocked and um, and that was when I knew, but then I also realized that he knew that I knew. Yeah. And that's a very dangerous time um, when, you know, someone who has, you know, gone along and you've gone along with this kind of uh, life of deceit, because there turns out to be a lot of other things that were uncovered that... I kind of thought about, but I didn't really have validated, but then they were validated. Um, you know, they, they ramp up their game. They want to destroy you at all costs. In fact, um, I kind of went radio silent, if you would, be, when that happened, because I, I knew I was dealing with, you know, a, a real malevolent perpetrator and, um, my light bulb went on. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And, and the next day I was even physically assaulted. You know, don't you dare divorce me. If you divorce me, I'll take your house, your money and your children. And, and I didn't even mention divorce. I was just like, just kind of shocked into silence after the unintentional confessions. And, mm -hmm. and, I'm just very conscious this is such a powerful story and I know there are so many people who are struggling with their relationships. I want to talk about how people can help themselves because ultimately that's what this program is about, leaving people better resourced uh, at the end of listening to it than they were at the beginning. From the lessons that you've learned, what do you think uh, would be your pearls of wisdom? Give me your three top pearls of wisdom to people who are listening to this that they can take away and use? Well, I would say first and foremost, follow your gut intuition. You know, the little voice in your stomach, in your head, you know, that's telling you something is not right here. Mm -hmm. And, and that is what happens when people hear that, but ignore it. Yeah. Those are red flags uh, that are kind of telling you there's, you know, there's something not right here. And if you feel that, go with that gut feeling that something is not right. If something is really meant to be, it will still be, you yes. know, later on. So, so think about your safety and think about your well-being and follow that gut intuition. So that would be the first thing, you know, I would also say, um, you know, well, paying attention to the red flags. I think it's, it would be very helpful for people in your audience that may resonate with what we have talked about to kind of look into what are some red flags, learn about gaslighting, learn about isolation and how isolation can happen even within families. You know, um, just learn about some of the, the behaviors that People who have an intention to harm or control or manipulate what they do. So I think knowledge is power. So, so take some time to research and, and look into what you are dealing with. You know, my first book in the five book series, True Deceit, False Love, is 15,555 terms and phrases on domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, parental alienation, and then intergenerational family trauma. Just looking at terms can help you 
you know, then realize, hey, I need to look into that and connect the dots. And then the third piece of advice would be get authentic, stay genuine, reconnect with who you are and reclaim your life again. It's never too late to reclaim your life and stay true to the values that you've always had. If you are someone that is an empathetic, loving, caring, compassionate soul, continue to stay that way. We just need to be a bit more discerning about not everyone is wired that way. And just because we believe in all of that, we can sometimes project our values of goodness onto others when really we need to kind of, you know, worry just about ourselves. We can't control what other people do. We can only control ourselves. So get authentic. I think that's great advice. For me, I think that learning to love yourself and recognize that you deserve to be treated well. And I'm not talking about um, people buying you treats. I'm talking about truly see you, listen to you and hear you, validate you and value who you are. But you've got to do that first. And if you want some help with that, I've got a, an online program called The Relationship Bridge, which is all about um, how you create a great relationship with yourself in order to create a healthy, loving relationship with other people. And you can find that on the uh, genuinely uh, dash you.com uh, website or the Gina Gardner Associates website. It's called The Relationship Bridge. So, Marnie, where can people find you? Well, you know, I'm not on social media, but I do have a website that is kept up to date and it's the title of my first book. So it's www.godcametomygaragesale.com. And it's there you can find out about me, my books, the people that have endorsed my books. And then the happening section not only includes my writing endeavors or speaking engagements, book signings, that type of thing, but I also highlight other people in their work to, you know, to provide resources to people in that regard. My books can all be found on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. My publisher is Balboa Press, which is a division of Hay House. So really, I'm just a click away to get some resources or to find out about the books that I have written. Brilliant. We're very proud to be members of B1G1, Buy One, Give One, which is an organization that has projects all around the world. It's designed for businesses to use kindness and giving as part of their marketing. And we invite every guest who comes on the show to choose one of four projects. And the projects at the moment are clean water, um, feeding the hungry, education, and a project to support young people in the Ukraine. What would you like us to donate to on your behalf? Probably the third one. Okay, education. We will because see. I am a teacher. I was a teacher for so many years. And, you know, being an educator is just near and dear to my heart. Brilliant. We will make sure a donation goes on your behalf. Remember, we give uh, donate uh, free meals based on the number of listeners to the show. So please do spread the word that even by listening to the show, you can be helping someone. So Marnie, thank you very much for joining me on the show. It's been a great pleasure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I just think these candid conversations can change the world and get people to a place of being more authentic. I think you're absolutely right. I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me uh, on the show. Do please tune in uh, to the next show. But if you want to um, work with me or talk to me, tell me what you think about the show, uh, contact me at Gina, G-I-N-A, at Gina Gardiner and Friends. And Gardiner is spelled G-A-R-D-I-N-E-R. -E That's Gina at Gina Gardiner and Friends. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Take care. Thank you so much. And I'd love to see you on the next show. Bye-bye now.